Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is a scientific presentation about fetus ultrasound. This is the sixth video in this video series about choroid plexus cysts. What is the definition of the choroid plexus cyst? Choroid plexus cysts occur in 1 to 2% of normal fetuses. The normal choroid plexus fills the atrium of the lateral cerebral ventricles prior to 16 weeks and can be best visualized in, trans, in the transventricular view just superior to the plane of the biparietal diameter. What is the pathogenesis of this cyst? The choroid plexus first appears as a lobulated protrusion of ependymal epithelium accompanied by mesenchyma and pia mater in the sixth week of gestation. In the eighth week, the choroid plexus becomes wavy because of formation of capillary loops and in the ninth week, the choroid plexus produces CSF. This beautiful fluorescent microscopic image shows normal fetal choroid plexus with wavy fold containing capillaries. And this another fluorescent microscopic image shows a choroid plexus cyst. The normal portion of the plexus exhibits typical folds, but the cyst contains angiomatous capillary plexus in its wall. The choroid plexus cyst is actually a pseudocyst with a wall of interconnecting angiomatous irregular capillaries. Choroid plexus cysts are believed to occur in the mesenchymal stroma when CSF is entrapped between the intervillous clefts hypothesized to develop when there is failure in transformation of the lobulated embryonal capillaries into the wavy fetal pattern. Most cases form from 13 to 18 weeks when the choroid plexus proliferates. The cyst then regresses by weeks 28 when proliferation and reduction in mesenchymal stroma occur. Approximately 95% of cysts disappear by 26 weeks of gestation. What can we do for diagnosis of the cyst? Of course, the most important modality is fetus ultrasound. The glomus is a focal thickened bulge along the posterior choroid, develops after 13 weeks and is the most common site for a choroid plexus cyst. We can see in this beautiful image here lateral ventricles, third ventricle and fourth ventricle, choroid plexus in lateral ventricles, third and fourth ventricles, and here fornix, anterior camshaft, and these are hypocampi. What is the imaging technique and ultrasound appearance of choroid plexus cyst? Choroid plexus cyst should be diagnosed by evaluating the lateral ventricle in the axial plane at the level of the glomus within the atria. A true cyst appears as a spherical sonolucent structure surrounded by the echogenic choroid plexus. The suggested size threshold for choroid plexus cyst is greater than 2.5 before 22 weeks of gestation and greater than 2 mm after 22 weeks. Choroid plexus cyst may be multiple in number, bilateral in distribution, contain internal septations, and protrude into the ventricular cavity. When a cyst is suspected in the axial plane, sagittal and coronal views must be performed for confirmation. Is there any pitfalls and mimics for choroid plexus cyst? Of course, yes. The first one is pseudocyst, mild ventriculomegaly, choroid plexus papilloma, and intraventricular hemorrhage. The first one is pseudocyst. Pseudocyst previously reported to represent the most common mimics of the cyst are oval hypoechoic structures produced by inclusion of the corpus striatum in the image of the choroid plexus. With the high resolution technology of today, it's more common to visualize heterogeneity of the choroid plexus due to minimal entrapment of fluid within the choroid plexus that measures less than 2 mm. 
This coronal ultrasound image demonstrates heterogeneity in the bilateral choroid plexus without visualization of a discrete cyst which corresponding to pseudocyst, mild ventricular megaly. Another common pitfall is mild ventricular megaly, which may be difficult to discriminate from a large cyst greater than 10 mm that distends the ventricle. Identification of the echogenic cyst wall separate from the ventricular wall and detection of internal echoes or septation within the cyst may be helpful. Also, the cyst may cause mass effect on ventricle wall, but the measurement of lateral ventricle is within normal range. When a cyst cannot be distinguished from mild ventricular megaly, short-term follow-up ultrasound may be useful as virtually all cysts resolve as the gestation progress. Another pitfall and mimics is choroid plexus papilloma. Also rare, a choroid plexus papilloma may potentially be confused with a choroid plexus cyst owing to its location in lateral ventricle. Yet, on closer inspection, these tumors can be rarely differentiated from the cyst in that they are lobular in morphology, hyperechoic in echo texture, and demonstrate internal color doppler follow. And the last pitfalls and mimics are intraventricular hemorrhage. Additionally, another uncommon mimics of choroid plexus cyst is in utero intraventricular hemorrhage, which is typically located in the germinal matrix or choroid plexus regions. Now, let me review a teaching case together. A 30-year-old woman referred for fetus axillary lymphangioma at 19 weeks gestation. This sagittal image of thorax reveals a complex cystic mass involving the chest wall, neck, and fetal face reflecting a lymphangioma. Sagittal image through the left ventricle reveals a heterogeneous echogenic mass expanding the ventricle. Although there is minimal fluid in the choroid plexus regions, there are another areas of increased echogenicity. No vascularity was visualized in color doppler imaging and this corresponded to intraventricular hemorrhage. In contrast, an oblique image through the contralateral right choroid plexus demonstrate a discrete cyst which was confirmed on coronal image. In this coronal image, we can do comparison between the right choroid plexus cyst and the left intraventricular hemorrhage. As with hemorrhage elsewhere in the body, intraventricular hemorrhage evolves over time. Initially, it's highly echogenic but relatively isoechoic to the echogenic choroid plexus. Eventually, the hemorrhage becomes heterogeneous or decreased in echogenicity. Lysed clot that is adherent to choroid plexus may be difficult to discrete from a choroid plexus cyst. However, clot is often associated with ventricular megaly and usually demonstrate irregular morphology relative to the smooth borders of a choroid plexus cyst. This image shows a grade 3 intraventricular hemorrhage, the lateral ventricle containing blood clot has a bright echogenic lining, presumably representing stryl ventriculitis. When a choroid plexus cyst is identified, however, a careful anatomic survey with attention to heart, brain, and hands should be performed. According to many studies, in approximately 14% of cases, additional anomalies are noted with choroid plexus cyst, which raises the risk to as high as 48% for aneuploidy. Choroid plexus cysts that are bilateral and complex do not increase the risk of aneuploidy, according to some studies. However, a large choroid plexus cyst in excess of 10 mm has been suggested to increase risk. According to many studies, if the cyst is isolated, the risk for aneuploidy is low at 
to 6.7 percent therefore other factors such as baseline risk should be considered is there any associated anomalies with choroid plexus cyst of course yes according to this study about one to two percent of infants with isolated cyst will have an underlying chromosomal abnormality which is the most common being trisomy 18. This study also found that the risk for aneuploidy was not related to cyst size, laterality or regression over the course of gestation. According to many studies, the incidence of choroid plexus cyst in fetuses with Down syndrome appears to approximate the incidence in the general population. Therefore, this finding is not thought to be a sonographic marker for Down syndrome. Several studies have demonstrated positive likelihood ratios that approximate one for the association between choroid plexus cyst and Down syndrome, indicating no increased risk over the background risk. Recent studies suggest that choroid plexus cyst may also be associated with congenital heart disease and hydronephrosis. What is the prognosis? Most choroid plexus cysts are incidental finding with no progression of the antenatal cyst after birth. And some studies have shown that fetuses with isolated choroid plexus cyst and normal karyotype have normal neurocognitive development after birth. Although rare, in the presence of a large choroid plexus cyst, space occupying effects can cause obstructive hydrocephalus and or injury to adjacent tissue that may manifest as focal neurologic deficits or seizure. This image shows a large choroid plexus cyst at 20 weeks. And this brain MRI, two months postpartum, demonstrating the presence of a large cyst which causing mass effect on adjacent brain parenchyma and ventricles. What must we do for management of choroid plexus cyst? We must know prenatal surveillance is warranted. Canceling is indicated as increased parental anxiety often occurs as some interpret the finding as a brain anomaly. According to many studies, in the presence of choroid plexus cyst and associated anomalies, advanced maternal age or abnormal triple screen analysis must recommended amniocentesis or chorionic velo sampling as risk for aneuploidy is 1 in 3. Although controversial, many studies believe testing should not be performed in the presence of only isolated choroid plexus cyst as the likelihood of trisomy 18 is low. On the other hand, some studies believe we must perform interventional tests solely in the presence of isolated choroid plexus cyst, knowing that 20 5 to 30 percent of cases of trisomy 18 are finding undetectable by ultrasound and that risk of aneuploidy is 0 to 6 percent, while the risk of fetal loss after amniocentesis is a half of a percent. Postnatally, nearly all choroid plexus cysts resolved and no further therapy is required. But persistence of a large cyst is extremely rare but could require neurosurgical decompression. Is there any risk for recurrence of choroid plexus cysts? Most choroid plexus cysts are incidental and sporadic and there is no any risk for recurrence. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. There are a few pitfalls and mimics for choroid plexus cyst which must be differentiated. When a choroid plexus cyst is identified, however, a careful anatomic survey with attention to heart, brain, and hands should be performed. The most common associated anomaly with choroid plexus cyst is trisomy 18, and the choroid plexus cyst is not thought to be a sonographic marker for Down syndrome. 
Many studies believe testing should not be performed in the presence of only isolated crate plexus cysts as the likelihood of trisomy 18 is low. On the other hand, many studies believe we must perform interventional tests solely in the presence of isolated crate plexus cysts. Knowing that 25 to 30 percent of cases of trisomy 18 have findings undetectable by ultrasound and the risk of Anoploidy is 0 to 6 point, while the risk of fetal loss after amniocentesis is half of a percent. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.